What's going on guys, Unknown Player here, and today we've got a ton of stuff to talk about. Basically a whole bunch of content went live, so I'll be summarizing everything inside this video. We've got two previously time-gated exotics that are now available, so firstly the Wish and the Bow, which I got myself, and also the Malfeasance Hand Cannon. On top of that, we finally got the real appearance of the actual Queen, so that of course is the conclusion of the whole Dreaming City story, so I want to explain what that means and what's going on there. There's a brand new activity called a Dungeon, which I would safely say is like a three-man raid pretty much. On top of that, I want to point out some cool Easter eggs and secrets that I found and of course some more news and bits and pieces like that so as always a lot to get through inside this video of course if you do enjoy it and if you want to support this channel then a like rating down below helps out a ton and let's get into it so let's talk about destiny's first ever dungeon which is called the shattered throne and this is definitely a new activity type for the entire game and also currently the most difficult it's got some enemies at 590 like i said the most accurate way to describe this would be something like in between a strike and a raid or like a three-man raid it's definitely very similar similar mechanics boss fights encounters puzzles and stuff like that this dungeon is also how you obtain the wish and the bows tied to the exotic quest line this is kind of a secret inside it but i'll explain that as well how you get to that point in terms of a bit of backstory into what this place actually is this is marasov's own throne world so inside the ascendant realm of course and this was built by her and riven as part of the plan to kind of kill orox and defeat him now of course this place has been cursed by the taken and by sabbath and she's the one that places curse here by making a wish with riven the reason the raid is actually called last wish is because sabbath last wish with riven was to curse this place and have this infinite cycle always going on that is why his three week cycle is always going to happen and always repeat basically that's also why the final boss is called the eternal return because she is cursed to forever return here and always come back every time every three week cycle this is always going to happen in this all savathan's plan as well now why savathan is actually doing this is a whole nother topic for another video but that is basically a backstory of what's going on here what this place is it does have a very similar structure to a raid so you've got different checkpoint systems so you can go to orbit and come back later and do them if you want also, of course, you get loot rewards after each section. There are three of them. And of course, a final boss at the end. Now, in terms of accessing this dungeon, it is actually a hidden activity. So it's basically a secret. It's not going to appear on any map or milestone or as any quest line. You have to go to the right place and go to the right spot. So to find this secret dungeon, you want to head to the confluence area. That's where it's located. And you can speak to a Tekken. In terms of getting here, you can take a shortcut next to the Oracle area, basically off the side of the bridge for a portal or go the long way through Rhea Sylvia all the way down through the Harbinger's Seclude for again another portal. The first of the three encounters is called the labyrinth and i would say this is pretty straightforward the only obstacle may be the light level of course around 570 so depending on where you are it may be difficult but mechanics wise it is pretty simple so you've got a bunch of different rooms with mini bosses and a corresponding symbol so you kill the mini boss see what the symbol is then go to the next area with that same symbol and you keep on going until you find the path to the end the mini bosses are pretty recognizable they're called labyrinth architects you kill one as you can see here it shows me basic bird as a symbol then i go find the room with the basic bird on the wall kill that boss it's going to show another symbol and keep on going through basically i got pretty lucky with my loot drop i got the merciless exotic but then after that it's going to be a pretty linear path so you do some jumping kill some enemies basically follow the path through the next encounter number two of three is pretty cool i do like this one this is an ogre boss in the middle with an overshield there's going to be these wizards stationed all around the room so you go around in a circle taking out all the wizards each time getting a buff when you kill one called petitioner's mark once someone gets the buff times three you can slam one of the four glowing plates in the middle of the map that takes down the boss's shield to do damage so that is a damage for phase and we did it in two phases so the third encounter is this wizard called dull Inkaru, the eternal return and this is a descendant of sabathun herself so she was placed here to carry out this kind of taken curse and carry out this plan of corrupting the city strangely enough though i did think this encounter was much easier than the ogre maybe it's just me but honestly i didn't think it was too bad we just kind of brute forced it with the ep shotgun so you go in kill the three knights then once you do that you can start damaging the main boss dull Inkaru, and then we simply just blasted her with the shotgun until she died it was one phase very easy very simple i think tethering these knights as you can see me doing here definitely helps a lot because of course it shares the damage equally between them so you do enough damage to kill one of them you kill all of them basically i know if you don't kill them all quick enough then some more add spawn there's also a debuff you have to cleanse in the middle before it wipes you and also the knights get shields you have to shoot crystals for to get rid of but it's a pretty simple room again shotguns and tethers are definitely your friend in here and once you kill her you're going to get another loot drop that's going to be well above your light level so definitely a worthy reward for doing this thing so let's talk about how the wish and the bow actually ties into this so it's actually a hidden quest line that kicks off in the middle of this dungeon so you might remember my recent video where i was speculating about the wish and the bow and how it ties to this character called zer ido this awoken warrior and of course the awoken talisman as well everything i said was pretty much correct so this character zer ido there's a statue for her just before this boss fight and she speaks to you and basically takes your talisman and this is what it was for so after this is basically going to be a secret and it's not going to tell you what to do but it's going to be a secret mission that does activate and this is going to be inside the four horn gulch of the tangled shore so in the four horn gulch you need to 
look for Toland. He's actually going to be here. The little white ball you normally know, see darting around the Ascendant Realm. He's going to be in here, and that's going to kick off another mission. This mission is super straightforward, and it takes you to a pretty cool location you can't normally get to. So you go here, three bosses spawn, you kill them all and get three tokens for Orivix, Zavoth, and also Quirum. So with these three coins, you're then going to have to charge them by killing the three corresponding bosses inside the Shattered Throne. So you're going back into the dungeon. The first boss is inside the Labyrinth section, and to get him to spawn, the same as all the other bosses I'm going to show you, it's take a ball and give it to a statue. So you want to go to the place called the Tower of the Deep, grab the ball, take it to this rooftop and give it to the statue that doesn't have a ball in her hand. Then you kill the boss and that is going to activate token number one of three. The next thing is inside the room with all the beams inside it where the ogres try and push you off. But you go to the right side as you walk in, grab a ball and take it to the left side and find the statue with no ball in her hand. Again, dunk it on a statue. Now doing this is going to open up a special door on the right side as you first go into the slowed thrall section. So you go in here, grab the ball, take it to the end, jump down past the thrall section and then dunk it again on a statue on the right side. So what this is going to do is spawn the second boss you need for the second token in this room as you progress forward. Also make sure you go into this room together because for some reason the first person that goes through is going to close the door very quickly behind you and as you can see here I got trapped in this little tiny room and couldn't get out. If this does happen you are trapped in here and you can't get out so you do need to wait for your teammates to kill the boss but it's going to give you a token so it is fine. The third and final coin and for the last step of this quest step is going to be inside this ogre room. So you do the fight as normal you kill the wizards get the buff times three slam the middle plate take down the boss's shield and when that happens there's going to be a special minotaur that spawns at the very back of the room killing this minotaur who does sometimes go invisible is going to drop another ball once again take that to a statue these are on the left side of the room dunk it and that's going to spawn your final boss this boss funny enough is going to be another smaller taken ogre next to the main ogre in the middle so you kill him and that is going to be your third and final token and all you need then you do the actual encounter and of course kill the main ogre after that of course go to the statue the statue of Zer Ido, and she is going to let you collect your loot which is the wish and a bow exotic. Now a cool thing about this bow is that this is the only weapon in the entire game capable of damaging and destroying these corrupted eggs. So of course these things that are immune you've seen all around the Dreamy City. This bow lets you see enemies through walls and also see the eggs through walls so you can shoot it. There's one right next to it as you can see right here and it's going to give you a non-powerful loot drop. This does also make sense lore wise because of course Zer Ido used this bow to kill Ahamkara so it makes sense for this to be able to kill the eggs. There are also dozens of these eggs scattered all around the Dreamy City so of course now the hunt begins to find all of them see what happens when you get them all i did find two additional eggs so if you head forward and then to the right of this cliff and kind of follow the edge of it round you can find another egg and also if you go just up the lift you'll see up in the wall there, there's going to be one more but like i said there are tons of these everywhere so it'll be interesting to see what happens once you get all of them but of course i'll let you guys know once that's found but yeah that is the shattered throne the very first dungeon in destiny history a very cool activity and of course the secret quest line that comes with it for the wish ender let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section so the wish ender was not the only exotic that's now available with this reset so the malfeasance hand cannon is also now available as expected it was time gated so it's simply a case of bungee flipping a switch and now it's actually available to drop so right now there's a very small chance that you can get a special malfeasance boss to spawn inside gambit as the primeval and this guy is going to be the same weird servitor looking thing as the final boss of the campaign getting him to spawn is pure rng so you can't do anything it's not about winning or losing or rank or resets anything like that just purely rng if you play a game he might spawn he might not obviously the odds of him not spawning are much higher but i know people that played for 10 hours and not gone to spawn and some people have gotten to spawn their very first try once you kill this special primeval boss you're going to get an exotic item quest drop the heart of the actual primeval boss itself then you take this heart to the drifter and he's going to give you a city of secrets quest step and this requires you to kill taken bosses or mini bosses 25 of them after that you're going to do a special version of the corrupted strike at level 580 but the funny thing is you can do it with six people so you can get three more people to join you and you do as many people as you want of course during this mission as i showed in my previous video you're going to go to Callum's grave a special location of course tied to the law and get a weapon part to give to the drifter the next step is to deposit 400 motes inside gambit and also win at 10 games which is quite a lot but the caveat is that of course every time you lose motes it's going to deduct times two from you so if you're carrying 15 motes and you get killed and lose them all you're going to be deducted 30 motes in total so definitely watch out for that something i don't think a lot of people realize is how good this is going to be for gambit everyone is going to play the objective of bank motes and collect motes as much as possible this is actually a very smart thing by Bungie. I can't see any downside. Everyone's going to be collecting moats, killing as much enemies as possible, and trying to bank them as fast as possible without dying. So I think it's a very good thing. Everyone's going to be trying to win. It's going to be very good if you're on a team with someone with this quest line. So for the last step, it's pretty confusing, but also very cool if you don't think you're that great at Crucible or killing enemy guardians, invaders in Gambit. So you can either yourself go through as an invader and kill all four guardians once, 
or you can have a teammate do it for you three times. Either one of those will count. On top of that, you also need 25 invader kills just flat out. So you can do those just one at a time whenever you want, as slow as you want. But the other step is pretty cool. You can either do it once yourself or if you have a good teammate, you know, get him to do it three times. That also count for it. And then after that, the Drifter is going to give you Malfeasance as an exotic. So pretty simple quest. But again, it does rely on RNG to get the Malfeasance boss to spawn as primeval. I'll put some links down below in the description to some people who have the weapon and post their progress. So that is Malfeasance and how you get it. So with this reset came, of course, the first and final stage of the Dreaming City Corruption. So after this week, the next Tuesday is going to be back to the beginning with a clean version, no taking corruption yet. So the Blind World, as much as I personally think is quite repetitive and monotonous at times, it has actually got a big purpose law-wise for the game. So it's because we've charged up the Blind World enough, now we can access the gateway to get to the Queen's Throne World and go find her. That's also why the Blind Well Bounty gives you the Oracle Offering after enough charges. So it's all connected. So once you do this week's Blind Well and present the Offering at the Oracle, you can go through a gateway and visit the the queen inside her court. This is actually the first time in Destiny history you can actually go and visit the queen and see her physically in game, not in a cutscene. I do have to say this moment was a little bit underwhelming. I kind of feel like there could have been a bit more happening here. She could have said more, or at least thanked us for doing all this work for her. I mean, this has been three years in the making. We've done so many favors for her. We killed Oryx for her, helped her with a plan with Eris Morn, and even saved her entire city from the Taken Curse. I mean, we did also kill her brother and her pet Ahamkara, but she doesn't seem to care about anything, to be honest. She's just there chilling, really, and doesn't even give you a powerful drop. So it's a bit underwhelming, but this, I guess, is the grand conclusion. This does also give you your third seed of light, so this can unlock your third subclass if you don't have it. Of course, the first way was to do the raid first encounter, but this is how everyone else can get their third seed of light. But there you have it. That is the Queen Marisol. Finally, for the first time in Destiny history, we can see her not in a cutscene. Let me know what you think of this down below in the comment section. But that is going to do it for today's video. As always, I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, before you leave, a like rating down below would be much appreciated. As always, lots more videos on the way for you guys. So make sure you don't miss out. Be subscribed if you're new and turn on notifications by hitting the bell next to it and you'll be the first to watch my videos. You can find my Twitter and Instagram down below in the description. This image will take you to a recent video I just made. But as always, I appreciate you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.